Hey there, welcome back to Mantic Stringworks. So, I thought it would be a good time to give a little update on the Octave Mandolin build. So you can see, I've got a couple of strings on here. And I did that because I have put the nut on, glued it in place, the saddles where we need to be, obviously. And I use these strings now to help locate the nut slots and also the saddle height. So we're pretty close to where we should be as far as an action goes. Of course I don't have all eight strings on so the tension will be a little different, a little greater. But next steps are going to be to locate the next strings. So we have the double strings, so each one of the strings on the mandolin is doubled. And we're going to need to drill out a bridge pin hole. So we're going to have a look at that and see how we can locate those. And of course we're going to have to sand these plugs down flush before we do any drilling. But let's see about that nut slot spacing. So one of the challenges I have, among many, <laughs> is the octave mandolin strings that I purchased have a loop end and not a ball end and one of the reasons I bought these is that they were available quickly you know shipping within a couple of days they were about ten twelve dollars a pack I bought two packs and the alternative so an octave mandolin string with a ball end was about twenty something dollars US you know close to thirty dollars Canadian plus shipping so it would have been about 80 to 100 dollars to get two ball and uh, octave mandolin strings shipped to me. So, hmm, what do you do, right? Necessity is the mother of invention. So here's the loop end, and that would normally go around the tailpiece, a metal tailpiece on the mandolin. So what I did, and you can see them down here, is I have a whole you know, bunch of old strings that I'd thrown out. I cut off the ball end off the strings and what I'm going to do, and I've done that already twice, <laughs> is I'm going to put that right there and it loops around and I'm going to squeeze that string around it. And so far that's worked out pretty well. And uh, I tried twisting one and it's going to break. It's very you know thin wire of course. So if I use a pair of pliers, pardon my fingers if you can't see, I just sort of squeeze that down and that seems to do the trick. There we go. It, it moves around a little bit but it's not going to come out of there side to side, especially once it's in there. Anyways, I'll do that for these strings and hopefully they stay put but sometimes you just got to figure something out, right? All right. Okay, so the next sort of challenge here is to figure out the string spacing. Um, I've never done string spacing on a mandolin. <laughs> so I've got string spacing rulers for six strings, but not for four. And it's an octave mandolin, so it's a little, the strings are a little thicker. In any case, I've determined we want to have about an eighth of an inch. So about 3.2 millimeters between the strings. So this is an eighth of an inch piece of masonite. I'm going to put that here and my assistant is going to pull the string tight along the line approximately where we want it. Good. So I'm going to make a mark. Just making sure that we're touching. Pull a little tighter. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just making a mark on either side of this string. Let me get that out of the way. And that's going to give me a spot where I can take my nut file and I can get right in there, right in between there. But I'm going to start that with a razor saw. Two here, so this one has 52 teeth per inch, so that's a really fine one. And this one has 24, 
This one you use for fretting. So I'm just going to find that middle spot. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And I'm just going to give it one little, a couple of little passes just to start that slot. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take the 46,000th file. Gonna get in that slot I just started and just run it over it a few times. Okay, just enough so we can seat the string in there. All right, that looks pretty good. So if you want to pull on that again, I'll just make sure we don't move. Use my spacer. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, okay. We'll try that. All right, well, we managed to space these out. I think they're pretty good. Again, these are just rough space. I'm not doing these nuts properly yet, but yeah. Okay. So I have to get some ball ends on the strings before we can uh, figure out the alignment. Okay, well, I'm just going to take a 120 sandpaper here, just a little piece of walnut scrap, wrap it around there. And I'm just going to give this a rough sanding to get all those plugs down flush. And I'm going to come back over this afterwards and give it a proper sanding. But for now, because I want to locate the holes that we're going to drill, and I need something flat surface. All right, my assistant Liam is helping. So I'm pulling this tight. We want to locate the next pin. It's going to be lower than this one. Uh, I have to. You know, when we push it down through the hole, I want to make sure it's not too close and then the ball of the pin hits the other one, right? So I'm just going to look and see about where... Yeah, so you know what, in line with that last one, the one that was there, I should say, that should be okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, and then all the other ones will be the same, what I'll do is make a little mark where we want that. So our string alignment is good. We're clearing the, its companion string right here. We're keeping about three millimeters. So I'm just gonna make a mark right under the middle of the string right there. Now, let me check and see. Yeah, that looks like it'll be good. They're going to be close to each other. I mean, that's just the nature of this type of setup. I might move it over just a hair. Let's pull that string again. So, like I said, I don't do this all the time. So, I'm just sort of figuring it out as I go. Yeah, I think we have, we have room to move it just a bit. Okay, all right, so maybe what I'll do is I'll move it back a little bit. I'll keep it on the same line. I'll put it right here. Okay. All right, let's mark that spot with an awl. It's always interesting, eh? Doing things for the first time. Okay, so we're going to use an 1164 drill bit, which is about 4.31 or 4.3 millimeters, 169 thousandths. So that is to match the hole I measured here, and it's going to be chamfered, flared out. So that's the very base of the hole. So 
We're going to drill that through, and then we're going to chamfer it out. Okay, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm going to go backwards. There's no finish, obviously, on this bridge. Right now I've sanded it off, but it's just in case. So I'm going to keep it perpendicular as best I can. There we go. We're through. I'll give it just a little more here. We don't get too many wood shavings down in the sound hole. <laughs> we'll get that after. Okay, so that's not very clean, but let's see. There we go. So you might say, hey, that's not fitting. Well, no, because this peg needs to chamfer out. So we're going to use this chamfering tool, this reamer. And we're going to start turning. Again, this is something you sneak up on. It's going to clean the hole out. That's going to give us that chamfer we want. And you just keep going until we get down to the bottom. And it's a good snug fit. So, a few more turns. It's always a good idea to sort of count in your head like four or five turns. You get an idea of how far. Oh, we're getting there. So, I wouldn't do five turns now. I'd probably do maybe two. Oh, there are half turns actually. Just like that. Ooh, that's close. Maybe one more turn. <laughs> one more half turn. Yeah, I'm liking that. I think it can go down just a touch more. Of course, now I can't pull it out with just my fingers. This little tool. Give it one more little half turn. It's one of these things, though. You don't want to go too far because then you can't go back. Yeah, I'm liking that. I mean, for now, probably can go down just a little bit more, but we're going to leave it like that. Okay, so I'm going to bend this down a little bit like I like to do, the acoustics. Get this pin. I'll probably buy some nicer new pins, you know, but again, just to reuse what's there. And that fits nice. Tighten this up, see how we did. Okay, well that worked out pretty well. Might have to ream that hole out just a bit more. But I'm really happy with the string spacing. The strings are not touching. So you can see it goes by the two bridge pins, so that's good. And then up here at the headstock, they're not touching as well as they go by each other. And that's, you know, on a regular mandolin, that's really close to, so that's not unexpected, but just gave it a quick tuning. Not bad. Of course, you don't have all the other strings on there. <laughs> but yeah, the spacing looks really good. All right. Okay, well, the next video, when we come back, <laughs> these strings, the holes should all be done. Uh, and then we're going to concentrate on fine-tuning the saddle and the nut, get this action playing okay, and then we probably are going to have an octave mandolin. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.